Yeah, so having done this uh, self-sufficiency for, for the last two years, slightly over two years, we've, uh, we've gained some experience in this. And also, uh, as, we fall, as we engage with our uh, subscribers, we get a lot of questions and we see a lot of interest in people wanting to live this kind of life, uh, move to the village or somewhere nice and quiet and uh, practice self-sufficiency. We feel that uh, it's good we do a, a video like this to educate you further or to give further information as what to expect if you decide to embark on this journey of self-sufficiency. It's not always, uh, it's fun, it's fulfilling, it's, it's, very, it's a very good life to live. However, like everything in this life, there are pros and cons. You know? there are, you're going to experience the good, the bad, the ugly, and then you're in between out of that. But at the end of the day, as long as you get joy from it, it's worth, uh, it's worth it. It's worth uh, uh, experiencing this uh, in your life. Yeah, so I believe that one of the biggest benefits of that we've come to enjoy for the last two years um, is being able to grow food from seed, seeing it grow, taking care of it to the time that we harvest it. And after harvesting it, we're able to eat our food very fresh. For example, we are able to harvest our own lettuce, eat it fresh from the farm, our own strawberries, eat them fresh from the farm, uh, sweet potatoes. We've actually harvested a wide variety of foods from the farm. Uh, we also harvest things like eggs, chicken meat, uh, turkey meat, duck meat, guinea fowl meat, uh, once in a while. But the chicken meat is usually the biggest for us. So we're able to enjoy the nice food from the farm. We're able to, we're able to enjoy fresh fruits from the farm. We're able to enjoy sugar cane. Um, I can tell you for free that Kisi is very hot. Uh, our farm is based in Kisi and it's very hot during the day. So sugarcane always comes in handy to try and quench the thirst. And also when you do a lot of work on the farm, sugarcane always comes in handy to restore your energy. Yeah, so planting, planting has a way of giving you some level of joy that uh, is very difficult to explain to someone unless someone actually tries to do the thing themselves. So, and through even the planting, the taking care of the crops, the harvesting, you're also gaining new skills as a person. And that is something that I've come to appreciate about the rural life that we are living. But I gain new skills every day. I learn how to take care of different plants every day. We learn how to take care of chicken. We learn how to, care, to take care of different birds. We have four different kinds of birds on the farm and they each require a different kind of um, care. So that's another skill that we've gained. We also have rabbits on the farm that also require different kind of care. So able to gain these various skills uh, on the farm on top of enjoying the wonderful fresh food harvested from the farm. So for example, we have this mango tree here. I think it's been here for about one and a half years. We've been taking care of it, giving it compost, uh, making the area around it, just making sure it's getting the best kind of management. And you can imagine in a few years, we are going to enjoy our own fresh mangoes. And it's not the only mango tree that we have. I think we have about five mango trees in different locations, actually six different lo six mango trees in different locations. Almost all of them are, the, are at the same height, uh, but they are different breeds. So you can imagine in a few years, we are actually going to enjoy different varieties of mangoes, just like we've been enjoying different kinds of fruits that we've grown for ourselves. Yeah, for me, the biggest benefit that I enjoy uh, about self-sufficiency uh, is the space that we have, the peace and serenity that we, we get to enjoy over here. Uh, and it's, 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 uh, it's hard to put it in perspective unless you're here with us, but I'll just try to explain that. Uh, where we are, our house, 
as a compound. Very nice lawn, trees, flowers, uh, where you can actually uh, stay in the house for a little bit, come outside, sit, enjoy the sun, or sit under the shade and read a book, or just get to the lawn and play a bit of football with the kids. It's, it's very, it's something that I enjoy very much. And you also have uh, like this place here where we are now, where we just, it's, it's usually where our chicken go, uh, go foraging around. Uh, and you can see how green it is. Uh, the other day we were discussing, it, it, we, we never knew we were going to do this, but it looks like an orchard, if I'm pro pronouncing that right. Because here we have several fruits. As you can see, uh, they have the popo. I'm not sure which one is this, but it's a citrus one. And then you can see the sugar cane, the loquats, the mangoes. So it's almost like an orchard. So it's, it's a very nice space that you can come and sit down and enjoy and have a chat and just relax your mind. Uh, the other thing about uh, the peace and serenity is that it's, we, we, this area is very hilly uh, with a lot of rivers and streams. So sometimes we, we take walks up the hills in roads that we don't find anyone on the, on the roads. And then we, sometimes we go to the river. Uh, we actually have access to the river. Uh, we have a land that touches the, the river over here where we, we planted some trees. So it's very, we get to enjoy a lot of stuff. Uh, the, the, the greenery, you know, the, the birds chirping in the morning uh, and in the evening. And they are very different, they're different. I'm, I'm talking about the wild birds now. We have so many different types of birds, birds here that even a bird watcher would enjoy sitting down with us here and just watching the birds. So it's very peaceful. It's very serene. It's something very nice uh, for someone uh, who really wants to enjoy this kind of life. You get to really enjoy uh, properly. So now that you've let you in into some of the things that we really enjoy about um, the village life, let's talk about the bird. And bird here is very relative. Eh? So um, transitioning to rural life, we nobody could have prepared us for the amount of labor that, or work, we can call it, that we would do for our farm to be where it is today. So there's a lot of there's a lot involved. There's tilling the land, there's weeding, taking care of crops, there's watering sometimes, there's harvesting, there's taking care of birds, there's taking care of um, rabbits. It's a lot of work, and it's very manual work. There's carrying of compost, preparing compost pits. Yeah? There's um, taking care of everything that you can see around us. It's a lot, a lot of work. So if you're planning to move to the countryside, it's one of those things that you need to be prepared for. So the other thing is um, when you're moving to the countryside, you have these big expectations. You've seen uh, photos, nice photos all over, nice harvest, for harvesting nice things and things like that. But now uh, when you land on the ground, you plant your things and you don't harvest anything because of issues to do with soil, um, issues to do with animal diseases, issues to do with weather conditions. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning process. For me, uh, I would advise anyone moving to the countryside to manage the expectations in terms of what they are going to get in the first year, especially, because you've not learned your soil, you've not learned your animals, you've not learned the weather in that area. So it takes quite a bit of time to understand all these things. So it's good to take your time and um, uh, manage your expectations uh, very well so that you're not disappointed by what you get. But eventually, as we say, it's a journey. Eventually you, you, you learn the soil. Eventually you learn how to take care of your animals. Eventually you learn how the weather behaves. You keep mastering it. You learn how to compost. And now things start working out very well, you start getting those nice produce that you are seeing uh, before you move to the countryside. Yeah, so now we've covered the good, we've covered the, the bad. Now we come to the last part, the ugly. However, I'd like to inform you that uh, the, the last part, which is now people, which is very important, is either, there's no in between, it's either very good or very ugly. Uh, because people are very important to your success uh, in whatever you do in this world, especially things like this, uh, like farming. 
because you're going to rely people to do uh, manual labor. Uh, sometimes you're going to be out of the farm. Someone has to be there to take care of your your farm, either your your animals or your vegetables. So people are very important. It is it's a process to identify the right kind of people you're going to to to, to work with, especially if you're moving into a new area. Even if you're not moving to a new area, for like an example, when you came to the village, we didn't know uh, people around. Uh, none of us had grown here. So we had to start learning people initially, slowly by slowly. Because we've experienced some bad things here and some good things uh, uh, to do with people. We've, we've lost some eggs. We've lost chicken feet just because we, we had to go somewhere. We trusted the wrong person and they took and sold them for alcohol or, any, or, or something else or cigarettes and, and something else. Uh, so these people are very important. Uh, and we are lucky in that aspect because we, 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 we finally were able to identify someone whom even if we go away for one week or even one month, we're actually not worried. Uh, and how do I, how do you go about identifying the right people? It's actually a process. You're going to get it wrong initially uh, if you're unlucky. Like us, you're going to get it wrong initially. But uh, from my experience here, uh, I've learned to look at a person holistically. So I look at you, if I want to work with you, I look at how you live in your own place. Are you, are you, are you something, someone who's very keen and ambitious, who wants to make an improvement in your life? Even if you are, at this point, you're very low, but you're actually progressing every month, every year or so. So I look at, for example, someone who had, last year I knew him, he had one cow. This year has two cows. Or a goat, this year has two goats. So he's also doing, to, to try some project to improve their own livelihood. And also look at how this person treats the family, the kids and the wife and the parents. That's very important. You get to know how. Because that person, the same way they're treating their, um, the same way they're treating their family, most likely they're going to treat other people almost the same way. It's not a, a, an exact science, but that's what we use here to identify. And uh, so far it's worked for us. We've been able to get rid of people in convenience for us who are going to make us not achieve our dream. And we've, we've identified the right people who you can actually work with. So people are very important. Uh, I think in whatever you do, in whatever you do. So, um, and they also have to understand your dream. You can get someone on your farm who is used to using fertilizers, giving antibiotics to chicken, just, you know, the first instance they think of is fertilizer, antibiotics, and all that. You need to tell them your dream. If, if you are going to do things organically, you need to explain to them that here, this is my dream, this is what I want to achieve. And so you, 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 you ensure that they buy into your dream, and so they're going to help you to achieve that dream. So uh, people are very important to you, and there's no in-between. It's either very ugly or very good, you know. So... Uh, Again, let me wish you, <laughs> let me wish you the best if you're going to that, start this journey because uh, people are going to be very important, and I hope you get to identify the right people who are going to carry your dream forward with you. Guys, another point to to remember, maybe to encourage you, is that when you grow things organically, as if you're going to do self-sufficiency and uh, go organic, um, sometimes when you grow things uh, like vegetables or well, even chicken. When you grow vegetables, they're not going to be as perfect as what you see in the supermarket, you know. So, uh, what you see in the supermarket, there's been a lot of uh, chemicals and insecticide and a lot of stuff used on to that to make them look that perfect. But when you grow things organically, uh, using compost as we do, the carrots will come in funny shapes, but that doesn't reduce their nutritious content or their sweetness and all that. Even chicken, the, chi the kind of chicken that we keep here is indigenous, 100% indigenous chicken. So they're not good, they don't grow as big as the other, as the broilers, they don't grow that big. But they're very nutritious, they're very sweet, and uh, you appreciate all those things. So uh, just the point I want to make that when you grow, uh, when you do this, self, go to this self sufficient way, and you grow your things, uh, you either keep the indigenous buds or you grow your vegetables organically. Do not be discouraged by either the shape of the carrot or the size and all that. Enjoy the... The, the sweetness and the nutritional value you need. It's actually very rewarding. The other thing about growing your own food is that you become very conscious with food because you grow fr fresh vegetables uh, organically, you keep your own chicken. So when you go to a restaurant, and, and let me just go back a little bit. When you grow your own food and you eat your own food and you cook your own food, it makes it very difficult to go to a restaurant uh, when to order anything because you you you, you can you, you can order for example a salad and you can actually test if it's not fresh or it's if there's anything else that has been added to it and so it's it's 
it makes us difficult difficult for people like us who are used to fresh food we have a food every day we are going if you need uh, let's say lettuce or carrots or onions we're going to have them today and consume them today as opposed to restaurants where they have to buy stock and then keep for a few days or freeze and all that so it's it's when you actually start on this journey you're going to experience i'm sure like us that ordering food in restaurants becomes a challenge because you can tell freshness from the word go from the fastest you put food in your mouth you can tell freshness Yes, yeah, so we've discussed the good, the bad, and the ugly of moving to the rural country based on our own experience. But this is your dream. And when you have a dream, you actually learn to make it work. And despite all, uh, all the bad and the ugly things that will happen, village life is beautiful. If you asked me, I, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now other than where I am right now. Because I've gotten to, together with my family, enjoy all the beautiful things that the village has to offer. And those always supersede the little trouble, the little issues that you may encounter here and there. Village life is beautiful. You get to eat your own fresh food, get to plant your own trees, fruit trees, get to plant your own sugar cane. You get to keep the birds that you want to keep. You get to keep even goats that will bring in the near future. You can even keep cows. For us, cows are not an option. But you can even keep cows if you want. Like literally, you are unlimited in what you can achieve. You can grow all sorts of crops. For us, we've tried so many things, things that people in this area have never grown. We've tried lettuce, we've tried beetroot, we've tried carrots, we've tried bulb onions, things that people in this area have never grown. But they're growing, they're doing well. So. And that's the beauty of um, village life. It's, it's an endless opportunity. It's you to define uh, what success looks for you. It's you to define what crops uh, you're going to actually plant. It's you to define what animals you're going to keep. It's you forming your journey just as you would want it, not, not somebody else doing it for you. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Uh, let's talk in the comment section. If you have an experience that you'd like to share with the community, you can put it down there. Let's discuss what's, what's, what has your experience been. Yeah, And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.